Throne and Liberty is an upcoming MMO by Korean video game developers NC. NC, previously NC Soft, is known for its popular titles such as the Lineage and Guild Wars franchises. Blade and Soul and the much mistitled Wildstar. Throne and Liberty started its development as part of the Lineage series. It was originally announced as the Lineage Eternal in November of 2011 as a direct sequel to the 1998 Lineage. At the 2011 G-Star convention, a gaming convention that is held in Busan, South Korea, fans got to see the first gameplay videos of Lineage Eternal. The game featured an isometric camera view rather than the third person it has come to be, and played a lot like the Diablo series and even the more recent titles like Lost Ark. Lost Ark was revealed three years later, and they both went on to become competitors. The two often got compared with discussions of which game would release first and who would have more success. I can't imagine how the developers felt when this game eventually did not get released and Lost Ark did, gaining global success instantly. Development and release was extremely slow, but fans were excited for this new game as new teasers kept getting released. A beta was supposed to be scheduled in 2013, which didn't happen, then in 2015, which also didn't happen, then ultimately NCSoft confirming in a conference call that it would be delayed until 2016. This closed beta, however, finally did happen. But this beta was announced an entire 4 months after the now competitor Lost Ark announced theirs. And it seemed like it was just a final hurrah, a final chance to show people that this game is coming and it will happen. In the first quarter of 2017, during the conference call to announce its latest financial results, NCSoft revealed that the company had changed the leadership of the Lineage Eternal development team. This decision came after the closed beta of Lineage Eternal, held late last year, in which NCSoft management felt that the game did not reflect NCSoft's characteristics. This newly developed project soon became known under quite an abundance of names such as Project TL, TL Origins, and then eventually TL Throne and Liberty. The new and final IP, Throne and Liberty, is a fully-fledged third-person MMORPG, with NC commenting that it is a spiritual successor to everything that the Lineage franchise stands for, including its massive PvP battles. The new game is no longer isometric, and as a result, is no longer a direct competitor with Lost Ark. True fans of the journey, however, I think would always remember where it came from. Throne and Liberty will release on PC and console and will also be available to stream play on your mobile devices. Now Throne and Liberty is packed with features that I think can really shake things up in the MMO world. First is its weather system. The weather system directly affects its terrain and its combat. For example, if it is raining, a lightning strike spell can hit more enemies while when it is not raining, it's just a single target spell. The terrain can possibly turn into impassable terrain by pooling too much water 
and change the entire feel of a certain environment. So far, we know of an extremely powerful weather spell that can be used by players, although this is severely limited. There is also an eclipse spell that changes it to nighttime from daytime. The weather and day or night cycle can also affect the type of mobs that are active and also their job table. The days are 5 hours and the night is 1 hour in real time. The day and night system affects certain skills, having different effects based on what time it is. For example, this dagger skill, during the day the poison damage is increased, while at night the poison duration is increased. The ratio of sunny to rainy weather is 4 to 1, and when the weather changes, it is kept for 30 minutes guaranteed. There is also wind which can affect your projectiles, including slowing them down based on wind direction or increasing their projectile speed based on the wind speed. Wind can also affect the gliding from your eagle. So maybe that small gap you wanted to jump over, you jump and the wind blasts in your face and your eagle just struggles to make it over and you fall to your death. <laughs> that might happen. And what eagle am I talking about you might ask? In Throne and Liberty, there aren't going to be any mounts you mount onto. Instead, you are the mount. <laughs> you heard that right. There is going to be a system in which you can transform into various animals for a specific travel. So far, we know of the panther for land, eagle for air, and shark for water. There is even a siege golem for the open world PvP in which players can stand on top of your flat head and get moved around. The main reason for switching up the mount system a bit was to make the experience more seamless with the terrain. The developers had stated that players enjoying the three-dimensional terrain is key to the player experience in Throne and Liberty. 보통 지하 던전이라고 하면 입구와 던전이 분리되고 던전 안에서도 여러 층으로 분리된 공간으로 구성하는 경우가 많은데 저희는 그 모든 공간을 하나로 연결했습니다. They've also stated that combat can impact multiple depths. So you can be above and healing your teammates below or camping a corner below and sniping people that are coming from above. 단번에 던전의 마지막 층으로 이동할 수도 서로 다른 층에 있는 유저들에게 도움을 줄 수도 피해를 줄 수도 있습니다. 던전의 안과 밖, 위와 아래가 연결됨으로써 공간적인 경험을 모두가 공유하게 됩니다. 그리고 단순히 필드를 뛰어다니는 것만이 아니라 입체적으로 구성된 지형에서 자신만의 루트를 만들어갈 수 있습니다. The world is one big continent with the mount system in place to reduce teleportation in between areas. So they are actively encouraging you to explore with your animal form rather than TP between spots. This world is actually shared with their other planned project, Project E, a more oriental Asian style game which happens on the other continent. And the universe or world itself is called North Korea. In Throne and Liberty, your role and abilities are determined by your weapons. Sort of like New World. This is called the Free Class System. The max amount of skills we've seen so far is 8 abilities, not counting your mouse buttons. The Holy Trinity of Healer, DPS and Tank is very much expected to be in this game, with skill images being rather obvious. The combat looks quite impactful, and the effects look pretty good. Each weapon will feature a defensive skill, which, if timed properly, can protect the player. For example, the shield has a block, and the staff has a magical barrier. While most MMOs have defensive skills, 
this might be a remnant of the answer from competing with Lost stock, as in Lost stock, every class has a counter skill in which if timed correctly can disable a boss. Character creation is designed for a worldwide audience. So definitely a breakaway from the Asian only designs we've come to know from a lot of these games. Although, why is the black girl's skin the same color as the rest? Of course her skin can be that color, but why in a video showcasing your diverse options you leave the black girl with the same skin color as the rest? Come on, be smarter than that. You can also create a character based on a photo you upload, which is quite the feature. I can't wait to see how accurate this will be. Character design is not permanent and can be customized after creating your character. Although this does seem to consume some sort of currency, so maybe this is one of the cash up items, who knows. Throne at Liberty has both PvE and PvP. The weather can trigger certain events to happen and places to open up. The developers stress that good players should take advantage of this. They've stated that most of the areas are safe zones, but become combat zones when boss raids or regional events take place. There is a timer to show everything that is taking place, so you can adjust yourself to not randomly walking into a PvP space. Regional events seem to be sort of a ranking event amongst players in which players fight or complete towards an objective for about 20 minutes to come out on top. So far we know of a wolf tail event in which you hunt wolves and deliver them and possibly fight other players to take theirs. As you can see here, the subjective states enter which is the top 80 at a regional event. So there is going to be leaderboards and ranking. There is a huge PvP battle called Siege Warfare, in which you try to take or defend castles. We don't have much information about this, but it seems you have to channel something to claim it and finish off any of the opposing players in order to capture the stronghold. Then there is Guild Wars. Guild Wars are where guilds fight over objectives that they can own or claim. There are the Possession Stones, which consist of the Blessing Stone and the Dimension Stone. Guilds battle it out and when they do control it, guild enhancements ensue and also it grants you necessary raw materials. So we are fighting for materials. I'm very excited for this bit as it seems to be a really good way to have players participate in PvP. There are quite a few features that we know about like memorials and possible uh, pets. What is that? Anyway, the information is quite vague, so the last thing I will talk about is some of my concerns. Firstly, it's NCSoft. NCSoft is notorious for cash up and pay to win and all of the predatory microtransaction stuff you can think about. They actually addressed this in a conference call and this is what they had to say. Yes, I will respond about the TL first and, and the business model that is going to be used. Of course, later on when the time comes, we will be able to provide you with more details regarding how the, uh, the, the portfolio of items that we will be offering. Uh, but of course, we are going to make sure that we, um, we actually really focus on play to win to make sure that we minimize the gap across the users as much as possible. But I would also like to add that there has been changes in the overall global game market regarding the monetization models. Previously, uh, people in North America and Europe, they were very negative and critical about the monetization BMs. But we now see a gradual acceptance of, for instance, battle passes, DLCs, and in-game items, even in these markets. And so these large game studios, since the development period is very long and because development of game types entails significant level of investment, 
They also, like NCSoft, by providing the live services, would they do wish to continuously create the revenue stream, and that has become a very important differentiating factor. So, of course, we will stay away from pay to win as much as uh, possible. Um, however, at the meantime, strike a good balance so that we can bring about a good and robust performance from the game titles. So it seems like there is going to be a cash up and it is going to have materials or gear that give you an advantage. I only say this because they specifically mentioned that they're trying their best to minimize the gap, which means there is a gap, which means some sort of advantage would come from paying money. I hope it isn't too much though. My last concern is the combat. Did you notice anything from the entire video and seeing flashes of combat? They ain't moving. They're all standing still. <laughs> Let me tell you, if this beautiful ass game releases with static combat, I am going to throw a fit. Don't throw yourself under the bus please, NCSoft, I am begging you. On the other hand, static combat may be because of the gameplay, like boss fights and the players needed to be in formation in a specific spot. So we'll see if it does release with static combat, but maybe it's made for how the game is meant to be played. I will see you guys in the world of Mob Korea.